Hello friends, welcome to Banker Zone. In this session, we'll be discussing the economic reforms. So see, economic reforms refer to the process whereby a government specify a declining role for the state and expanding one for private sector in the economy. So what do you mean by economic reform? Simply, economic reform, if I have to say in one word, economic reform means simply expanding the role for private sector. What is mean by expanding the role for private sector means privatization <laughs> okay so if you say the word you if you like the word economic reform please remember it is meaning of privatization okay so expanding the role of a private sector is nothing but the economic reform okay so this is official definition okay now see a brief overview of the economic reform economic reform aimed at expanding the private sector participation means privatization in the Indian economy's growth okay so instead of controlling by the government for example instead of a public sector banks promoting more the private sector banks is the best example for private sector participation okay so this is just economic reforms okay now in 1980 India has seen a number of changes that fit into the in two category okay what are the two category see in 1980 reform during the 1980s reform which was influenced by the washington consensus okay what do you mean by washington consensus doctrine washington consensus was coined by the economist john williamson okay so who coined the washington consensus it was coined by the john Williamson okay remember he was describing the list of a policy that had gained the support among the policy makers in respect to the debt crisis of the early 1980 early to mid 1980 key policy reform of the Washington consensus was privatization uh, then fiscal discipline and trade openness so here simply what do you mean by Washington consensus Simply, it is the uh, the group of policy, or it is the doctrine of the policy. It is simply the doc document of the policy. Okay, and it is given by the John Williamson. So when it is given, see, if we look back at the India's economic reform, first Indian reform was influenced by in 1980, influenced by the Washington Consensus. During 1980, India's reform has been also influenced by the Washington Consensus. What what it actually it is having the document, it is having the document which represents or which support the new policy, which give which gives some idea about policy changes. Okay, and government different countries government start uh, started implementing it, and the positive effect also seen. Okay, and that include privatization of the different sector then fiscal discipline should be there means governments uh, what is this uh, what is deficit deficit means more government spending than government income so government will be in minus right so and uh, along with that trade openness fiscal discipline means government should not exp uh, do the expenses more than their income that is the fiscal discipline to the government trade openness means there should be openness in the trade okay so uh, the that are the basic part of the Washington consensus so in short I will repeat what do you mean by economic reform economic reform is nothing but expanding the role of the private sector okay now see India's 1980s reform was somehow influenced by the Washington consensus doctrine okay now Washington consensus doctrine uh, the term basically coined by the John Williamson and uh, what, is, what, what is written in the doctrine Washington consensus it is uh, written there do the privatization do the more fiscal uh, stay adhere to the fiscal discipline and uh, trade openness should be there okay so this is just overview of this now see while the changes of the 1980 saw a limited deregulation and partial liberalization but the reform started in 1990 okay see 1980 we have just started few reforms okay only few reform but actually in 1990 okay we done the reforms in a broader sense 
in a very broader sense okay so why we know in 1990 what happened liberalization privatization globalization okay remember the lpg reforms now see what was the uh, 1991 economic reform in india what actually happened see as a result of a number of economic factors including the balance of payment crisis poor performance of the public sector drop in the foreign exchange reserve large government debts inflation that is inflammatory pressure then stringent condition laid down by the world bank and the imf so this is very bad background that india was going through okay so see here uh, that reform is having very bad background why reform taken place in india see in 1991 there was very much high political instability pv narsimha rao was the prime minister at that time balance of a payment okay what do you mean balance of payment basically the whatever the export minus import okay whatever export minus import or you can say the uh, revenue generate by the way of uh, you are uh, the revenue currently generate by the way of export that is simply foreign currency reserve you remember okay now balance of a payment becomes almost at the lowest position of india then uh, the performance of the public sector okay that was not uh, that much adequate level then foreign exchange uh, reserve say dollar euro that was uh, at uh, at the lowest level then government has lot of debt then there is lot of inflation then uh, imf that is the international monetary fund and the world bank has laid down a very hard condition that if we follow that then only they will support us okay so there was very bad situation for our country during the 1990 because we are having almost very less very less foreign currency reserve okay so uh, you may you might be uh, heard that uh, our gold was kept with some other country okay so that is also a true fact our gold first kept with the singapore then uh, but that money we got that was not uh, sufficient to uh, get over the crisis that's why the reform called as the in 1991 lpg reforms were adopted now see here the uh, transformation how the transformation happened see the green revolution industrial modernization have been have transformed the india's economy to the growing economy okay so obviously uh, we know green revolution happen and after that we will be we become the self reliant for the food on the food grains then industrial moder- uh, modernization was one of the important aspect for the transformation of indian economy the term new economic reform refer to the neo liberal policy okay remember if there is term new economic reform you have to consider it is nothing but the neo liberal policy okay Uh, put in place by the indian government in 1991 okay what happened in 1991 so indian government has uh, done the reforms called as the lpg reforms okay liberalization globalization and the privatization okay so these are the lpg reforms were laid down by the government now economic transformation in the real sector see what happened actually for what is liberalization see liberalization was conceived with the idea of a regulation imposed on trade agreement must be relaxed what is liberalization means you should be liberal you should be open so whatever whatever the uh, there is restrictions on trade that must be relaxed it is a part of the liberalization it enabled the opening of economy for international investor and included the enhanced production capacity abolition of the government industrial licensing and the liberty to import the goods so that policy basically government has adopted and that is the part of the liberalization what is liberalization means be liberal that means relax some norms that means basically relax some norms it for the international trade for licensing or for the importing the goods okay that is the liberalization what is the privatization very easy right privatization means providing private sector more opportunity okay and uh, limiting the role of the public sector so minimize the public sector and maximize the private sector this is nothing but the privatization okay privatization introduced in india as a part of the reform invited more and more foreign participation as well as the foreign direct investment flow that is fdi flow 
providing healthy competition among the Indian goods and the services. So due to the FDI, okay, lot of foreign uh, foreign companies came to India. They started competing with the Indian company. So there will there is a huge competition in the Indian market, and that is good for the customer. More the competition, more will get uh, more the consumer will get goods. Okay, now globalization. What is the globalization? In the context of the economic reform, it refers to the integration of the Indian economy with the global economy. See, become a global means see integration of Indian economy with other or the global economy. Okay, uh, along with that. integration of a culture movement of the labor force from one country to other transfer of a technology basically you are having good relation with other country it is all the part of the globalization okay and in simple words integration of the indian economy with the global economy is nothing but the globalization and that globalization signifies india's economy will now become more dependent on the global economy also and vice versa also right globalization encourages the fdi and the international trade with the various country due to various globalization policy india could be able to attract the foreign capital technology knowledge to boost its domestic capacity now see economic transformation economic transformation in the financial sector okay see that financial sector here we will be uh, discussing mainly the banking sector so banking sector reform aimed at making financial sector efficient competitive and stable okay see in the previous section we have discussed the uh, liberalization privatization and globalization now here we will be discussing the reform in the banking so what are the banking reform simply government formed the numerous committee okay and that are important for an exam point of view see chakravarti committee on monetary policy in 1985 narsingha committee first on financial sector reform 91 then padmanabhan committee to review the bank supervision in 1996 then narsingha committee to on review the banking sector reform 1997 then verma committee on weak bank in 1998 then rh khan committee on the harmonization of role of a financial sector and the bank in 1998 okay so that committee are important for your exam point of view okay so that you have to remember what you have to remember i uh, recommend you to remember the name of the committee chakravarti committee okay and uh, the topic was monetary policy narsia committee first for the financial sector reform narsia committee second again to review the banking sector reform okay so remember first committee was on reform and second is for review the reform okay for the narsia committee first and second then padmanabhan committee to review the bank supervision okay verma committee on the weak bank v for vw okay so verma committee on the weak bank rh khan committee on harmonization of the role of the financial institution and the banks okay so that you have to remember these are important you can get mcq based on that now see banking sector reforms banking sector started with the phased implementation of prudential measures implementation of the competition enhancing measures then augmentation of the role of the market forces introduction of the so uh, institutional and the legal measure like a formation of the lok adalat debt recovery tribunals asset reconstruction company introduction of the supervisory measures introduction of the technological advancement so basically there are a lot of reforms in the banking sector also after uh, as we are studying the economic reform what happened in the banking sector in case of legal reform lok adalat were established debt recovery tribunal means drt where bank can go and file a case against the borrower okay to recover the money so lok adalat up to 20 lakhs you can go in the lok adalat drt the cases uh, i think more than 10 lakh more than 10 lakh rupees you uh, is outstanding you can go with the drt okay so these are the legal institution is formed to for uh, these are the reforms in the banking sector okay now see here first phase of reform okay so first phase of reform if i say it is the narsingha committee first okay what is uh, that see 
the committee on the financial system okay cfs under the chairmanship of the narsingha committee okay so remember committee on the financial system cfs under the chairmanship of, of m narsingham okay based on the committee's recommendation rbi in 1992 issue the new guideline on income recognition asset classification and a provisioning requirement so friends this is important for your examination in uh, based on whose committee obviously this is one of the very very important for the your uh, compliance point of view okay so remember the name yam narsingham committee committee on the financial system income recognition asset classification and provisioning requirements okay that guideline has been uh, given by rbi now see new standards also put in the banking sectors attention to credit risk and the recovery management okay and apart from that uh, credit risk is also being considered what is the credit risk see whatever the loan bank has given to the customer okay that if that customer is failed to repay that loan failed to repay there is the risk okay and loan are nothing but the uh, loan is nothing but the asset for the bank okay it is part of credit okay we are giving credit so uh, the failure of repayment of the loan is nothing but the your credit risk now few of the important reform that took place in 1992 see capital adequacy now what is the capital adequacy you see every bank has to keep some amount of a percentage of their uh, ca- exposure that means loan whatever the loan bank give some percentage of that bank have to keep separate as a security okay for example see suppose 100 crores loan bank has given okay so 9% of it for example 9 crores bank have to maintain as a separate buffer separate okay so that bank can so that out of if that bank uh, that loan becomes in pa bank at least can use that 9 cr okay that is basic uh, concept of ad- capital adequacy that will be discussing in detail soon now progressive reduction uh, of a cash reserve ratio so crr means that a cash reserve ratio that means amount of a cash that bank need to keep with the rbi okay so uh, previously it was very high now it is reduced to around 3 or 4% okay so very less amount you have to keep with the rbi then slr also that is statutory liquidity ratio that will be discussing the term in detail then deregulation of the lending rates credit delivery debt recovery tribunal strong supervision system entry of a new private banks merger and the amalgamation of the banks so these are the few area now see second phase of the reforms so what is the second phase of the reform when narsingha committee to came into picture in 1998 government set up the committee on the banking reform in india under the chairmanship of the m narsingha and in order to review the progress of a banking sector reform the benefit of the second phase of banking sector reform what it uh, it gave to us the deregulation of the branch licensing then prudential norm of the disclosure requirement disclosure means what disclosure means the bank has to disclose the information whatever it available for example what is the investment of the bank bank has to dis- uh, declare what are the uh, shares the bank is having who are the important shareholder in the bank bank have to disclose so different disclosure requirement basically bank has to give okay and generally bank is disclosing all data in their financial or the quarterly results or the annual results now capital adequacy is also one of the important reform in the second phase that is narsingha committee 2 okay now there are some important milestone of the banking sector reform prudential reform okay so prudential reform include phased implementation of the international best practices so what do you mean by that see you know basel basel committee basel 1 basel 2 that we have to discuss in detail see basel is the international standard okay and according to that standard the bank have to maintain some capital as a reserve means some amount of money basically bank have to maintain aside okay aside that means separate you have to keep okay this is international guideline and uh, we started that following okay so it is a, one of the important reform then in order to lower the risk in the banking system so to reduce the risk basel is important okay now adaptation of the major such as a risk weighted capital adequacy requirement limit on the 
fund deployment in the sensitive activity migration to the advanced method under the basel 2 these are the example of a such a step okay so we have uh, now improving ourselves basel 1 basel 2 like that okay now even basel 3 we are moving so these are the international standards we are doing now see here see the main approach the main focus of the reform was in three area first is the npa second is the capital adequacy and third is the diversification of the operation now a graded approach of a bank licensing say approach which can be equally applicable to both domestic as well as the foreign bank this is nothing but the graded approach what is graded approach you cannot buy for it okay graded approach means whatever the uh, domestic bank procedure to get license is same for the foreign bank also so that graded approach was incorporated that creation of a different a differentiated bank what is differentiated bank so india was announced in the union budget 2014 that differentiated bank will be created now differentiated bank means simply the nisi bank okay means what the bank like a regional rural bank or the local area bank that means bank for the special purpose bank for the special purpose like uh, uh, say there was one bank called bharti mahila bank okay that was created for the uh, considering the women in the india okay so these are differentiated banks okay that was one of the important reform okay now see supervisory reform what do you mean by supervision supervision means uh, simply see establishment of the board of the financial uh, supervision okay this is one of the important uh, reform then implementation of the camels camels means c for the capital adequacy a for the asset quality m for the management e for the earning and l for the liquidity so these are the uh, basically supervisory rating system so what is a camels there will be a question in your examination in camels a stands for asset quality in camels m stands for management e stands for earning l stands for liquidity okay in this way you have to remember okay so remember the full form of the camels okay and camels is what it is basically the supervisory rating system it is supervisory rating system strengthening the uh, strengthening in of internal audit enhanced due diligence on the important shareholders fit and a proper test for the director okay so these are the some uh, important reform in case of supervisory reforms okay the most important here you should remember the camels the full form of camels capital adequacy asset quality m for management e for earning l for liquidity and this is the basically camels is the supervisory rating system now see uh, the competition reform okay so prior to reform bank in india were uncompetitive okay and inefficient due to excessive government control and limited access for the private and the foreign sector banks okay so basically you can say monopoly of the private uh, public sector banks was there so government lowered the public ownership in the bank okay up to 49% they have lowered okay still government is controlling 51% share so that the control will be with government okay so uh, that means basically around 100 or 90% share was holding with the government but after reform government reduced it to 51% only okay in the public sector bank and allowed uh, that uh, to participate foreigners or the foreign entity in the share holding pattern of the banks apart from that there will be fdi there is fdi in the financial sector so due to the introduction of fdi foreign uh, investor started investing in the indian market now there are some market reforms what do you mean market see removal of the administered interest rates measures reduction of the crr reduction in the slr okay then discontinuation of the ad hoc treasury bills market determined pricing so these are some reform in the market enhanced transparency disclosure norms to facilitate market discipline okay then introduction of the pure interbank call market auction based repo reserve for uh, short term liquidity management 
facilitation of the improved payment and the settlement mechanism so these are some reform basically in the market now see institutional and the legal reform so what are the legal reforms see establishment of the lok adalat that is people's court then drt uh, establishment of the drt then asset reconstruction company okay now settlement advisory committee corporate debt restructuring mechanism then adaptation of a uh, securitization reconstruction of a financial asset and the enforcement of security interest that is sir fic act okay so this is important for exam point of view it is important okay so what you have to note here the adaptation of a securitization okay so you remember here simply what is sir fic it stands for securitization and reconstruction of a financial asset and enforcement of security of interest okay that is the sarfic act so it is one of the important reform in the banking or the legal reform for the banking establishment of the cic or cib cib or cic stands for credit information company or credit information bureau for example civil what is civil civil is the score you get civil score for every customer which demand for the loan right so civil uh, establishment of civil one of the important legal reform then establishment of ccil that is clearing corporation of india which is very important for the settlement of the payment in what in the government security in the government security apart from that the banking uh, ombudsman scheme 2006 was the latest right so banking ombudsman scheme which was established in 1995 provide a quick and the low cost uh, venue for the bank client that means customer to resolve their grievances the enactment of the insolvency and the bankruptcy code 2016 it was also one of the important reform in the banking now what ha- what are the technological reforms see technological reforms infinite the it is one of the important development in the technology sector infinite as the financial sector's re, uh, communication backbone infinite okay infinite is the uh, backbone of the financial sector for the communication as well as the implementation of the nds that is negotiated dealing system for screen based trading remember nds is used for what purpose screen based trading nds stands for negotiated dealing system okay that will be discussing in detail in our uh, last module okay so here you only remember nds is used for screen based trading in the government securities okay rtgs stands for real time gross settlement that is also one of the important reform and rtgs is uh, used if you have to transfer the money more than 2 lakh okay so limit for rtgs is uh, minimum is 2 lakh and maximum no limit okay that you have to remember now rtg stands for real time gross settlement now the use of atm ka then card based transaction internet banking mobile banking neft neft stands for uh, the neft stands for national electronic fund transfer okay and what is the limit for neft there is no minimum and no maximum so there is no any limit for the neft okay then see then eecs stands for express check clearing process so these are some reform in the technology sector so there is one committee chaired by the uh, dr k c chakraborty dr k c chakraborty and uh, created that committee for it vision document 2011 17 so committee headed by d c chakraborty they have created one document called as the it document or it vision document 11 to 17 which provided a basic road map for the increased it use in the banking industry okay so that name you have to remember the name of the document you have to remember okay now artificial intelligence is important also the machine learning ai ml okay very very popular right now ai ml to conduct the real time data analysis from and provide the customized solution in the banking to the customer for example chatbot chat uh, chatbot is generally used okay so many now uh, banks are also using the chatbots whatsapp chatbots is also available on whatsapp you can get the balance on whatsapp you can uh, uh, do the check request so these all are the part of the artificial intelligence now digital india revolution uh, catalyzed by the pradhan mantri jan dhan yojana 
EKYC, UPI. So these are the revolution in the digital India. See, remember, Pradhan Mantri Janadana Yojana was launched in 2014. So JAM stands for the Janadana. Then A for Aadhaar. Janadana, J for J, A for Aadhaar, M for Mobile. So JAM, that a trinity has been a game changer for the India, enabling them to take forward the financial transaction inclusion to the futuristic format. So it is very very important JAM. So they can ask you the full form in the JAM. JAM stands for Janadhana, Aadhaar and Mobile. Okay, These are one of the important trinity in the uh, India's financial inclusion. Okay. No, 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 now the DBT, DBT is the direct benefit transfer, it is also important development. Now see here the debt market reform, okay. What is debt market? See debt market basically government issues some bond, okay. And you, uh, you the customer, you purchase that bond, in that return you give some money to the government, okay. And uh, when on the maturity, government again give you the money and redeem that bond. This is basically the debt market. Integration of the auction system for a price discovery, addition of a more instrument to the government security market and enabling major like uh, allowing foreign institutional investor FII to invest in the government security. So these are some important reform. Introduction of the automated screen based training in government securities also and using the NDS negotiated dealing system. So it is one of the important reform. Government has also introduced a new T-bill. 91 days T-bill was introduced for managing the liquidity. Okay. So how many T-bill means treasury bill. It is having duration 91 days. And then uh, after uh, it is a 182 days and after that 364 days. Okay. 364. So there are three types of the T-bill. Uh, 91 days, 182 days and 364 days. Now and the zero coupon bond. Then floating rate bond, then capital index bond, these were issued. Okay. Also, uh, exchange traded interest rate future were introduced. So, what is the future? Okay. What is the zero coupon bond? Okay. That all we have to discuss. Zero coupon bond means bond where you are getting zero interest. Okay. Floating rate bond means the bond where rate of interest is floating. Okay. So these all we will be discussing in detail in the upcoming chapters. Now OTC interest rate derivative is introduced. What is the derivative? Okay. What are the OTC? OTC is over the counter. Okay. Interest rate derivative means uh, derivatives are basically for the underlying underlying assets. Interest rate means the derivative which are underlying uh, as whose underlying asset is the interest rate. Okay, that will be discussing in the upcoming chapters in detail. But here you just understand the reform has been taken in the OTC interest rate derivative. Okay, these are basically introduced in the Indian market, Indian debt market. Foreign institutional investor FII were allowed to invest in the government security. Okay, subject in, uh, subjected to certain limits. So these are one of the important reform. You come, you invest. Introduction of the automated screen based trading system in the government security through NDS. I have already told you. Okay, so these are the some imp important reform in the um, uh, debt market. Apart from that, I have already told you CCIL that is Clearing Corporation of India was uh, started, settled up, RTGS is started. Then uh, there is a transparency in the trading of government security to ensure that transparency. Delivery versus payment system, uh, delivery versus payment settlement system was introduced. Okay, so important bit you have to remember. To ensure the transparency in the trading of a government security, DP, DVP, that is delivery versus payment settlement system was introduced. Okay, repurchase agreement, that is repo rate, was uh, was introduced as a tool for short term liquidity. Then subsequently, LAF, that is a liquidity adjustment facility, that also introduced. Then market stabilization scheme MSS was introduced to manage the surplus of the liquidity. Okay, that how what is MSS that we'll be discussing. Then foreign exchange some market reforms were introduced. For example, what are the foreign exchange market reforms? Then uh, the FERA Act 1973. FERA means Foreign Exchange Regulation Act. It was 1973 Act was replaced by FEMA. That is Foreign Exchange Management Act. So remember, FERA was replaced by FEMA. Okay, and what is FEMA? FEMA is Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999. Okay, so FEMA was the uh, criminal offense 
violation of a fema is criminal offense but violation of the fema is the only civil offense okay that means you cannot go in the jail due to the violation of fema but if you violate fera you can go into jail now see development of the rupee foreign currency swap market okay introduction of the additional hedging instrument what is hedging hedging means you do something to avoid loss basically for example suppose you are having some property okay so you do the insurance of that property uh, when you uh, you have probability of getting damage okay so instead of security you do the insurance of that property that means basically you have you have done the hedging okay so that we'll be discussing in detail in the upcoming chapters so hedging of instrument has been started hedging basically means additional in, uh, instrument that is hedging instrument we are introduced uh, for example foreign currency rupee option what are the options options means basically it is the trading instruments okay options that we will be discussing in detail how to put how to uh, call put option that all we will discuss then permission to the various participant in the foreign exchange market okay so these are some reform in the forex apart from that the authorized dealer ad are permitted to uh, initiate the trading positions borrow and invest in the overseas market subject to certain limit okay so ad has given some permission to borrow in the overseas market also nri as well as the foreign institutional investor are permitted to trade in the exchange traded derivative contracts okay so these are some reforms you just go through it there are some reform in the insurance sector also what are that insurance sector reform see irda you know irda it is the insurance regulatory and the development agency it stands for irda these were created to govern or regulate the insurance business in india then cross selling of the product that is bank assurance what is bank assurance means simply selling the insurance selling insurance through the banks or through the bank branches this is nothing but the bank assurance okay this is also started uh, insurance companies now are taking up the step to venture into the innovative distribution channel for their products obviously they are doing venture for example see the uh, now see uh, canara robeco canara robeco so this is the uh, insurance company tie up with canara and the robeco okay apart from that canara hsbc is there then a union bank is selling the religar health insurance okay sbi and sbi life okay so there is a venture they have created <coughs> sorry a large number of private insurance company generally with the foreign capital participation have entered into the indian insurance sector okay now there are some capital market reform what is capital market see shares you purchase share you sell share this is basically the capital market right now see formation of a sebi sebi stands for security exchange board of india formation of a sebi is one of the important development in the capital market you know you know 1992 scam arshad mehta scam okay so after that it is important uh, right to study the capital market now see what are the reform see in 1992 indian stock market was opened to the foreign institutional investor okay they can invest in the indian st uh, for stock market through uh, through what through the adr adr stands for american depositor receipt gdr stands for global depository receipt and fccb stands for foreign currency convertible bonds ecb stands for external commercial borrowing so this in this through uh, way the foreign institutional investor can invest in the stock markets indian corporate sector was granted to access the international capital market okay so these are some reform in the capital market apart from that the reform that have taken place in the capital markets are establishment of the creditors rating agency increasing merchant banking activity rising the electronic transaction growing mutual fund industry right then establishing of the clearing houses rolling the settlement investors protection growth of a derivative commodity trading ipo grading migration of a mutual fund from commission based to the fee based system and then margin trading so these all are the development in the capital market okay so basically uh, these are the development now see economic transformation the integration with the global economy so see since uh, 1980 we are observing some important uh, reform in india's economy the international trade has increased from 15.5% of india's gdp in 1991 
टू फिफ्टी फाइव पॉइंट सिक्स इन नाइन टू थाउजेंड इलेवन सो सो शेयर ऑफ द इंडिया वॉज फिफ्टी इंक्रीज इन दी ट्रेड सी इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड हैज इंक्रीज फ्रॉम फिफ्टीन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट इन नाइनटीन नाइन्टी वन टू फिफ्टी फाइव पॉइंट फाइव इन टू थाउजेंड इलेवन फॉर दी कंट्रीब्यूशन इन द इंडिया जी डी पी मीन वाइल नेट इनफ्लो ऑफ एफ डी आई हैव रेजन फ्रॉम जीरो पॉइंट जीरो थ्री टू टू पॉइंट फोर टू इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सो इट इज गुड इनक्रीज इन दी एफ डी आई वाइल बींग ब्रॉडली बेनिफिशियल इनहांस डिजिटल ग्लोबल इंटीग्रेशन हैज मेड इंडियन इकोनॉमी मोर सेंसिटिव टू एक्सटर्नल शॉक सो सी वी follow the globalization means we adopted this we can import import export we have connected with other country so what happen we are more sensitive to the external shock. that means see if there is any recession in the america okay that can impact india now because we are globally connected we followed the global uh, globalization okay so uh, we are very much prone to the external shocks okay now see economic reform in india see important thing you have to remember here द जगदीश भगवती जगदीश भगवती द कैटेगराइजेस ही कैटेगराइज बेसिकली द इंडियाज इकोनॉमिक फेल्यूर इन टू थ्री कैटेगरी फर्स्ट ड्यू टू द स्ट्रॉग इकोनॉमिक कंट्रोल ओवर द प्रोडक्शन इन्वेस्टमेंट एक्सेट्रा देन इनवर्ड लुकिंग पॉलिसी एंड द फॉरन इन्वेस्टमेंट पॉलिसी एंड थर्ड इन सफिशियंट और से इन इफिशियंट सॉरी इन इफिशियंट पब्लिक सेक्टर सो दीज आर द रीजन अकॉर्डिंग टू जगदीश भगवती there are uh, due to is india's economic failure okay so remember what are the three reasons strong bureaucratic control over the production investment and the trade inward looking policy and the foreign investment policy and in uh, efficient public sector functioning okay so these are some reasons according to jagdish bhagwati now the following point can explain the economic crisis 1990 so how the 1990 crisis happened see high fiscal deficit what is fiscal deficit more spending than income so minus okay so more uh, spending than income that is nothing but the fiscal deficit okay very easy an economy's fiscal deficit health reflect the quality and the quantity of a government expenditure as well as the revenue right so you are having deficit more that means you are spending more less than your income so there is deficit government's expenditure increased the fiscal deficit from 5.1% of the gdp in 1980 to 8.4% in 1991 so fiscal deficit increased in 1991 which is one of the important reason for the crisis next uh, the government borrowed uh, money to reduce the fiscal deficit government borrowed the money and did that caused the domestic debt is increased from 33.3% of gdp to uh 50% of gdp by 1990 so to borrow to minimize that fiscal deficit government borrow more money okay but due to that the debt of government has increased around 50% of the gdp so it is very high the increased burden of a debt payment uh, due to this debt is increased as see 50% of gdp was the loan on the india right so to uh, due to the heavy loan 50% of the gdp the payment to that debt that is to payment that loan 2% previously it was 2% now the payment only that is repayment uh, is increased to 3.8% so see this is the basic overview over you can imagine due to such a pro big problem india was in a big uh, crisis and dr manmohan singh came to rescue he taken over the ministry of finance and implemented the reforms now see adverse payment of payment situation adverse balance uh, balance of payment situation what happen in that the current account deficit of india uh, increased from 1.35% of gdp to 3.69% of gdp from 80 to 90 okay the trade restrictions uh, uh, was there due to this the current account deficit increased okay so current account basically used for trading purpose and uh, it mainly having foreign currency A drop in the foreign remittances from arabian nation as a result of the gulf crisis there was gulf crisis so uh, there was very less remittances in the uh, india from the arabian nation the unstable coalition center that means pv narsimha uh, was uh, the prime minister and uh, there was very unstable uh, coalition government at the center so political instability was the, there in 1990 so that was definitely harmed the confidence of the foreign investors 
okay so uh, particularly nri was very much aware about the situation and that's why the outflow of nri deposit started from the india the government restarted the external borrowing as a result india's external debt increased from 12% of gdp to 23% of gdp by 1990 The increase in the foreign borrowing increased, and debt payment also increased from 15% to the 30%. In a, okay, this is basically the figures that shows how the crisis was developed. The foreign exchange reserve fell to US dollar of 1.2 billion, and which is only sufficient to support only two weeks import. Okay, so we are on the verge of getting solvent. get in bankrupt in within 2 weeks okay we were having only 2 weeks time why because we are having only 1.2 billion us dollars to support the import the india faced a bankruptcy uh, bankruptcy and failed to satisfy its foreign debt obligations so we are not even able to repay the uh, debt so uh, due to uh, there was a high inflation rate is one of the important reason see during 1990 to 91 the inflation was around double digit okay that means uh, more than 10% annual average rate of inflation was 6.4% from 80 uh, 1982 it was increased to 11.3 in 1990 okay so this is one of the important reason for the reforms so the main cause of inflation obviously the deficit financing and increase in the money supply okay you know more the money supplied in the economy okay so more money available so more the money available price will increase and price increase means inflation okay now see macro economic stabilization reform so what reforms has been taken macro means large level macro means at a large level that means considering india as a whole entity so fiscal poli- uh, policy reforms tax reforms balance of payment reforms monetary policy reform and inflation control these are the macro means large level structural uh, adjustment reform means see industry policy reform infrastructure reform agriculture reform and the financial sector reform these are the structural reforms okay so that basically uh, adopted now see the summary part what we learn basically see this is complete theory part okay so what we learn what is economic reform simply the privatization that means private sector participation should be increased okay in 1980 the reform was influenced basically by the washington consensus doctrine okay and that doc- that uh, basically uh, saying more privatization okay so that we have discussed the 1980s reform has been uh, 1980 india has seen a number of changes and that fit into two category 1980s reform influenced by the washington consensus doctrine okay that you remember that may be a question in your examination apart from that reason for the economic reform in 1991 are balance of payment crisis poor position of the public sector enterprises foreign exchange reserve decreased more government debt inflation was high okay these are some uh, conditions apart from that the world bank and the imf has put a very hard condition okay very stringent condition to support the india okay these are some reason for the crisis then green revolution and the industrial modernization one of the important transform uh, transformation in case of economic reforms okay so uh, green revolution was important due to the green revolution we become self reliant on the food grains apart from that the three main pillars of economic reform was the lpg liberalization privatization and the globalization liberalization means simply uh, less regulation on the trade agreement that means more uh, trade without restrictions privatization means private sector should be given more opportunity other and uh, improving the role of a private sector globalization means integration integration of the indian economy with the global uh, global economy okay that is lpg reforms now the most significant reform in the currency market was the transition from a single currency fixed exchange rate to uh, uh, see the most important transformation from single f- currency fixed exchange rate system to controlling level of the rupee against the basket of a currency then to market determined floating exchange rate system so what do you mean by that see previously the uh, currency uh, rupees price was uh, was uh, uh, was basically developed or decided based on the fixed currency of a basket 
okay there are some fixed currency for example dollar or the yen or uh, like that okay but after the reform india decided that value of a rupee or uh, will be decided based on the floating exchange rate mechanism okay so and that basket is not now now not fixed it is changing okay so that is one of the important development okay now see some uh, sample questions which is not one of the primary pillar in 1991 reform so liberalization privatization and globalization automation is not a pillar narsiha committee on the financial sector reform is related to which sector insurance capital market or the money market is related to the banking and uh, on the financial sector reform which is not a part of the supervisory reform camels okay so uh, camels c for capital adequacy e for asset quality e for the earning l for the liquidity m is not for the merger okay m is not for the merger okay which among the following is not instrument used by the indian corporate sector to access the fund from the international capital market okay so adr are used american depositor receipt gdr global depositor receipt okay fcc uh, b and ipo so ipo is not allowed not okay so adr gdr and fccb so answer will be d or to mark okay so these are some sample questions you can expect in your examination so here is you can subscribe our youtube channel you all know you can download the application okay this is the app link is given in the description you can also join our telegram group for that you can search this group on the telegram otherwise you can directly search at the rate ca at the rate jaibbz okay happy learning